What's up, everybody? My name is Dr. Rossi. I'm a board-certified psychiatrist bringing you mental health content here on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to know that you guys are getting value from this material that I'm creating. With that said, I'm going to crack into today's topic. And today's topic is an exciting one because it's counterintuitive to everything that you're taught as a psychiatry trainee. And that is is there an antidepressant sweet spot? Is there a particular dose of medication or an ideal dose of medication that will provide the maximum efficacy with the minimum amount of side effects? And we're lucky because there is one researcher who set out to answer that exact question. So I've been prescribing medication for a long time and whenever I'm using an antidepressant medication, this being a serotonin reuptake inhibitor or serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor or other second generation antidepressant, I'm always looking to optimize the treatment. And what I mean by optimizing the treatment is I look to reach an effective dose and I also look to see that the person's been on the medication for an appropriate length of time. Now, if there's a partial response or no response, the first intervention is usually to number one, make sure the person is taking the medication as prescribed because sometimes people just simply are not taking their medication or are taking it intermittently or only when they feel depressed or anxious. And so the medication never really gets to an effective steady state in their blood or plasma. So you don't get steady state plasma levels as a result. Now, if that's the case, obviously the first thing to do is some psychoeducation and let the person know that they have to take the medication as prescribed in order to see whether or not it even works. Now, let's say they're already doing that. Let's say the person's doing all the right things and they're still not getting a full response or they're getting only a partial response to the medication. It's usually prudent to then increase the dose. That's our typical thinking. Our typical thinking is, well, hey, this person's not doing that well on 10 milligrams of escitalopram, let's make it 20 milligrams because obviously more is better. And now there are FDA approved maximums for every one of these medications. So you kind of have your rough guideline, but there's nobody that's really set out to say exactly what dose is most effective and has the least amount of side effect burden so that the patient is going to stay on the medication. If I actually said to you guys that Increasing the dose of antidepressant beyond a certain amount may offer little benefit with respect to treating depression and it could possibly increase the risk of side effects and, the, and result in people dropping out of treatment. Now this is again contrary to what we're taught in residency and other training programs and it really raises that important question, what is the ideal dose of each medication and is there any research out there that supports an ideal dose of medication? So before diving into the new medications, I want to first point out that blood levels of certain tricyclic antidepressants directly correlate with treatment effect. And this is what we term a dose response relationship. And what that ultimately means is that as the dose is increased, the response to the medication increases. Kind of makes sense, right? Examples of a linear relationship here would be imipramine and amitriptyline and a slightly different, not necessarily linear example, but still an example where the plasma levels are effective to follow and that by targeting a specific plasma range, you will get the optimal effect is nortriptyline. So with nortriptyline, a plasma level between 50 and 150 nanograms per deciliter is ideal and doses that result in plasma levels obviously below 50 nanograms or above 150 nanograms are associated with worse outcomes. So there are medications where following plasma levels can be very, very effective. And instead of looking for the optimal dose, so to speak, you have an objective measure in the form of a blood test that you can do to see whether or not the medication is at an effective dose. The main objective of the study was to say what dose of each medication will provide relief of symptoms while reducing the risk of side effects and discontinuation of treatment. And they did this for a lot of the common medications that are prescribed in psychiatry for depression. And if we look here, I can kind of run them down for you. And they're actually, again, going to be lower doses 
than what you might otherwise expect or what you might have otherwise been prescribed yourself and or, pres or prescribed as if you're a physician or another mental health provider. So with bupropion or Wellbutrin, it seems that the optimal dose is somewhere between 150 milligrams and 300 milligrams daily. Now, of course, the FDA approved maximum is 450 milligrams, but it seems like the sweet spot where there's less side effects but still good efficacy in terms of the treatment of depressive symptoms is somewhere between 150 and 300 milligrams. Now, for citalopram, the optimal dose is between 20 and 40 milligrams, and the FDA approved maximum for citalopram is 60 milligrams. With S citalopram or Lexapro, the optimal dose is between 10 milligrams and 20 milligrams, with 20 milligrams being the absolute highest. At least FDA approved. It isn't always true if you're treating OCD. Just a little aside there. Fluvoxamine is optimal dose is between 100 and 150 milligrams, and the FDA approved max is 300 in OCD. For fluoxetine, the optimal dose is 20 to 40 milligrams. For paroxetine, the optimal dose is somewhere between 20 and 30 milligrams. For sertraline, the optimal dose is between 50 and 100 milligrams. For venlafaxine, the optimal dose is between 75 and 150 milligrams. And for mirtazapine, the optimal dose is between 15 and 30 milligrams. So this is, this is good information and good data for us to have. So what we can take away from the research that's presented here is that these medications work best in lower to middle range doses. They don't work best at the highest doses. So it would be incorrect to assume that we should optimize everybody's treatment by maximizing the dose of the second generation antidepressants. And this provides the best balance between both efficacy and side effect burden, which is something we want to do because we want to keep people in treatment. We don't want them dropping out of treatment. So what I would do is I would titrate to the optimal dose listed here. And then if there's no response to the medication at all, person has no relief whatsoever, I would consider switching to a different medication. And if the person had a partial response, I would consider adding an additional medication in an augmentation strategy. So with that said, I'm going to hold the video there. I think this is a good spot to stop. And if you guys have questions or comments about optimal dosing of, of second generation antidepressants, I'm happy to answer them. But I think this is really important to keep in mind if you're a mental health provider. And it's also important to keep in mind as a patient because you want, you, you, you want to know where these sweet spots are and you want to know where your risk for side effects is going to be significantly higher. So thanks for watching. I appreciate the time and please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to keep doing this for you.